Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station, a serverless expeditions mini-series focused on helping developers modernize their app to using the latest features on one of our serverless compute platforms. Today, my colleague Martin and I will hop on our little friend port of the train to continue our journey migrating from the App Engine user service to cloud identity platform. Sounds great, and as always, I'm happy to be here, Wes. Last time in Module 20, we gave the Module 1 sample app the ability to sign in and out users with the user service. What are we doing today? That's right, Martin. For those who haven't seen the Module 20 video or completed its code lab, links are available down in the description below. Pause here to check them out because we start from the Module 20 app. This Module 21 video is about switching from the user's API to Cloud Identity Platform to manage users. Sounds a little too easy. Uh, every time you, we do one of these migrations, it's usually more than just the one advertised. Uh, what else are we doing today, Wes? I'm not getting away with it this time, aren't I? All right, we're repeating the Maldo 2 migration from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB and upgrading to Python 3. OK, that sounds doesn't sound too bad, actually. Wait, wait, I wasn't done yet. While it's true that there are no additional migrations, there's a little bit of extra work. The user's API has built-in support for App Engine admin users, but not identity platform, so we have to build that functionality so that it matches how the user's API works. What do you mean by admin users here? You mean giving people access to my cloud project? Because that sounds like a security issue. No, no, no. I meant admins of just your app, not your cloud project. An admin of your app doesn't mean they have elevated access in your project unless you give it to them, say, if they were also a developer of your app. OK, that was good. Uh, I was just a bit confused about what admin meant here. Yeah, it's just an arbitrary title and could just mean such users have extra functionality in your app, but it's completely independent of whether they're admins of any of your cloud projects. We covered admins a little bit more in Module 20, so go back and check it out for more details. Got it. I suppose admin is an overloaded term, so thanks for that. Uh, maybe we should come up with a new term. Now, back on topic, since there's so much happening today, I don't want to focus on things we've already done, like the NDB migration. Can you point our viewers to where they can find out more about that migration? Understood. We'll stay focused on the identity platform migration, but keeping mention of NDB to a minimum. You can find out all about the cloud NDB migration in the Module 2 video and code lab, which are linked below. Cool. Now, what does a migration to identity platform look like? It's quite different from the App Engine users API, isn't it? Yep. It's different. Users is a purely App Engine solution, while Identity Platform is based on Firebase Auth, which has many features on its own, like support for email password and phone authentication, as well as federated identity provider integration and other features you see listed here. Down below, we'll link you to an overview page where you can learn more about Firebase Auth features. Federated Identity Provider Integration. It's a mouthful, but it also sounds kind of interesting. What does it actually mean, Wes? Well, first, what if every app you make that has users requires you to build yet another email password authentication system? Crazy, right? And it's not even related to the services you're providing. So identity provider integration means that you can just use Firebase Auth as your authentication solution for all of your apps. It supports signing with email and password, phone, and email links. Furthermore, Firebase Auth supports federated identity providers so users can sign in with the ones listed here. Uh, wait, does this mean that I no longer have to require all my users to have Gmail or Google accounts? That's right. Sign in with all those providers also comes with Firebase Auth, and there's a pretty nice UI component you can just drop into your code today. I am sold on Firebase Auth. It's very awesome. I'm wondering what else Identity Platform can do to make it even more amazing. Yeah, I know. It's hard to top Firebase Auth, right? Well. Let's give it a try. So Identity Platform takes all that's available in Firebase Auth and adds a number of enterprise features to it, like multi-factor authentication, OIDC and SAML SSO support, multi-tenancy, 99.95% SLA, and more. Link below is a page that compares features of both products. I didn't think it was possible, but those are great additional features, uh, way more than you can get from AppEngine's old user service. Uh, so how else is Identity Platform different from that old user service? 
Good question. Features aside, the biggest difference is where the authentication code is located. The user service runs in your App Engine app code. Code that lives on serverless platforms like App Engine or server full platforms like GKE, our managed Kubernetes service, or plain old Compute Engine VMs is considered server-side. If the auth code lives there, that means there's going to be a round trip to the server for every sign-in and sign-out. Now contrast that with Identity Platform and Firebase Auth, where the authentication code is in the web page users see on screen. That's client side because the computing logic is downloaded with the client HTML. Now that we know the difference, let's compare Module 20's sample app versus Module 21's. Uh -huh, I think I understand now. It looks like the Module 20 app has to connect to App Engine to access the user service server side for signing in and out with Google Sign In. But the Module 21 app uses the identity platform code embedded in my client side HTML and JavaScript. So it doesn't call App Engine the server to do anything, right? Exactly. This means that our app is more correct because as a user, I shouldn't be triggering two visits when I hit at the app and then log in. And yep, it generally doesn't require calling the server. Ah, I didn't realize that. Uh, yeah, it seems like calling server twice would be inefficient. Um, and what do you mean when you said the auth process doesn't generally require hitting the server? Man, nothing escapes you, does it? Well, OK, if all we need to do is swap user off the client side, then we'd be done, right? However, as we mentioned earlier, we need to check whether a user who has just signed in is an admin or not. And that does require a quick ping to the server for a quick yes, no answer. Got it. Uh, anything else to be aware of? Well, because we're using new cloud services, they have to be enabled first. Can't run any code without doing that. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So what are we enabling, and how do we do it? The new services we're using are Cloud Data Store, Cloud Resource Manager, and Cloud Identity Platform. The first pair are APIs. So you can enable those from either the API Manager in the Cloud Console or from the command line using the gcloud services enable command. And what about Identity Platform? Uh, isn't that the most important service to enable? Uh, that is the main migration we're doing today, after all. Yep, that's right. Identity Platform is a bit unique in that it's not enabled in the API Manager, but in the Cloud Marketplace. It's really more of a service than an API. And at this time, Marketplace services can only be enabled in the Cloud Console. That was a lot. Uh, can you summarize this migration at a high level for everybody? Sure. We're migrating from the App Engine user service to Identity Platform, which is enabled in the Cloud Marketplace. Identity Platform has a few extra steps we'll cover during the migration, so stay tuned for that. To mimic the user's API's ability to recognize admin users, we need to enable and use the Cloud Resource Manager API. We're repeating the Module 2 migration from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB, and we're porting the app from Python 3. And then maybe, if you have to, we'll backport it to Python 2, but more on that later. OK, there's a lot going on here, so, so that summary was really helpful. Uh, right, I'm ready to move to Identity Platform now. Great. We'll start with the Module 20 code and finish with one of the Module 21 folders. Pause if you need to find your Module 20 code or copying it from the repo. Here and below are the links to the repo and the code lab. Ready? Let's go to the computer and do this migration. For each migration, let's ensure we're starting with a working app. In this case, the Module 20 sample. Go to the folder where your code is and delete the lib folder if you have one. Run the pip install command to install the third-party packages into lib. Python 2 developers know that self-bundling like this is required by App Engine. And one big benefit of upgrading to Python 3 is that you no longer have to do this. Now deploy to the cloud using the gcloud app deploy command. The app should show the most recent visits, as well as allow for user logins, including recognizing admin users. Now that we have a working app, we can replace its use of the user's API with Cloud Identity Platform. Porting Python 2 apps to Python 3 is something that most of you will likely be doing. So that's what we're doing as well. If for some reason you have to stay on Python 2, the CoLab provides details on how to backport the Model 21 Python 3 app back to Python 2, but we won't cover it here. The first step is to enable all the new services for the Model 21 app. Earlier, Martin and I discussed how you can enable APIs from the Cloud Console. Go to the API Manager and enable Cloud Data Store and Cloud Resource Manager APIs. Alternatively, enable both of them from the command line. The final service to enable is Identity Platform, which requires you to do it from the Cloud Marketplace in the Cloud Console. After you've enabled it, there are two more steps as part of its setup. 
First, because Firebase Auth supports so many auth providers like sign in with Twitter and Facebook, you have to choose which ones you want to use for your apps. The App Engine user service only supports Google sign in, so that's the only one we enable in this code lab. The next step is to click on Application Setup Details. From the Web tab of the resulting dialog, copy the API key and auth domain fields from the config variable. We're going to drop those two into our web template in a minute. The code lab has all the details, so be sure to check it out. AppEngineConfig.py and the lib folder aren't used in the Python 3 runtime, so delete them. The module 20 requirements.txt file listed only Flask. For additional third party libraries required for module 21, we're going to add the Cloud Authentication Library, the Cloud NDB and Resource Manager client libraries, and also the Firebase Admin SDK. For app.yaml, delete everything except for the runtime directive, changing it to a supported Python 3 version. Today, that would be 3.9 or 3.10. At the top, replace the imports of App Engine NDB and users with Cloud NDB and Resource Manager. Also, add a new import of the Firebase Admin SDK. In addition to initializing Flask, create a new data store client as Cloud APIs generally require a client object. Since we're only going to use the Resource Manager API once, we're creating its client elsewhere, so stay tuned for that. Next, we're adding new code to support user admin validation. The Users API has built-in support for recognizing admins, but Identity Platform isn't an App Engine product, so we need to build this missing functionality. We also don't use the Firebase Auth custom claims technique for recognizing admin users because that requires our app to manage who the admins are, and so instead, we're doing it the way that the Users API does it. The get GAE admins function uses the Resource Manager API to fetch the IAM allow policy. It collates and returns the complete set of all admin users based on their App Engine roles. Later on, you'll see we call this function once and cache that set of admin users. The next function we're adding is isAdmin. When a user signs in with Firebase Auth, the client side calls this function, passing in the logged in user's ID token. Once the ID token is verified, the user's email address is extracted to see if they are in the set of admin users. The yes no answer returned helps the client determine whether to show the admin user badge in the UI. The last code snippet to add are two lines to initialize Firebase Auth, as well as to call get GAE admins to cache the set of admin users. Creating new visits and querying the most recent visits don't really change. The only difference is due to CloudNDB requiring use of its Python context manager when making data store calls. So you see new with blocks encapsulating those calls in store visit and fetch visits. This is identical to the module 2 migration. The user service is a server-like solution, and its use in the main handler supporting user management is replaced by Identity Platform's client-side solution. This means deleting all of the user management code from the app and reverting it back to the main handler all the way back to module 1. All of the functionality removed will be added back on the client side in the web template. And here it comes, starting with the required Firebase imports, followed by the app config. Earlier, we copied the API key and auth domain from the Identity Platform Application Setup Details dialog, and this is where you add both values. That's followed by initializing Firebase and Firebase auth. Finally, implement the login and logout functions for the button in the UI. Moving down, the last new piece to add is the callback for when the auth state changes, meaning when a user signs in or out. If logging in, display the user email at the top, flip the button to log out, and call isAdmin on the server to see whether to show the admin user badge or not. On the flip side, if logging out, replace the user's email address with the generic user, remove the admin user badge if there, and flip the button back to login. The remaining changes implement replacing the values from the user service to those from Identity Platform. And that's it as far as updating the code goes. Now let's confirm that the new Module 21 app works. First, be sure you've completed the following. Enabled the Cloud Data Store and Resource Manager APIs, plus the Identity Platform. Enable at least one Firebase auth provider, for example, Google Sign-In. Configure Firebase with the API key and auth domain variables in index.html. Deleted the lib folder and app engine config.py if you haven't already. Now, run gcloud app deploy and then visit the app on app engine. You should see the same UI as the module 20 app, the most recent visits with user login functionality at the top. Click the login button. What happens next depends on how many users are registered with your web browser. If you have no users registered with your browser or one or more, but none are logged in, you get the expected Google sign in dialog. If you already have one user already signed in, the pop-up immediately disappears, leaving you in a logged-in state. 
If the user isn't an admin, you should just see their email at the top with a logout button. But if the user is an admin, you should also see the user's email plus the logout button, but in between is the admin user batch. If you have multiple users registered with your browser, you'll see the account picker from which you choose an account to log in as. If they're already signed in, you won't be prompted for a password and you get the appropriate admin or non-admin screen we just mentioned. Congrats for successfully migrating from Appendium users to the identity platform. Wow, that was a pretty big update, Wes. I'm happy we even fixed the bug where signing in now doesn't result in yet another visit uh, to the server. And we completely changed out the user management system, switched from server side to client side, and built our own admin user validation. Uh, there must be a lot of documentation to read for all this. Uh, could you point us to it? Sure. All of the product documentation you see here are linked below. We've also included an IAM overview page so you can learn more about roles and allow policies. Great. Thanks for all that for our viewers to check out. Uh, now that we've successfully migrated to Identity Platform, what other migrations should I consider? Great question. And a couple come to mind. Before this migration, we introduced how to use the user service, which was covered last time in Module 20. App Engine also has task queues. Learn about migrating push tasks to cloud tasks in modules 7, 8, and 9. For migrating pull tasks to cloud PubSub, see modules 18 and 19. We also migrated from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB here, so review the module 2 for more details we couldn't cover today. If your app uses App Engine Memcache, consider migrating to Cloud Memory Store. That's covered in modules 12 and 13. If your app uses App Engine Blob Store, consider migrating to Cloud Storage and see modules 15 and 16. If you want to upgrade to Python 3 but stay using App Engine Bundle Services, see module 17. Those running small App Engine apps or who want to break up large monoliths can consider Cloud Functions, covered in module 11. Finally, if containerization is now part of your software development workflow, you can migrate to Cloud Run. Module 4 is for Docker users, while module 5 is for those who are new to containers or don't want to do Docker, Docker files, or even think about containers. And we look forward to having you join us on any of those journeys. This is Wesley on behalf of Martin and Porter, and we'll see you on another serverless expedition soon. In the meantime, happy travels. Mm -hmm.